As you read the New Testament scriptures particularly, though also in the Old Testament, there are so many miracles of healing. Some have noted that Jesus performs more miracles of healing than he preaches sermons, at least sermons that are recorded. And uh, in this hour, I would like to speak with you about prayer for healing. A paradigm shift occurred for me. How many miles is it to southern from here? Around 26, says an accurate person. Around 26 miles from here, I witnessed a miracle that radically changed my thinking about prayer for healing. And I have permission to share Janet's story with you. In fact, she asked me to share her story with you. Because she said there are so many people who are damaged, who need to know that Jesus can make them whole. It was Wednesday evening. We were having a small group praying in what used to be Pearson Chapel, the old religion building. Some of you, if you're old enough or you've read Antiquities, you'll know that on the campus there, the religion department, as it was called, used to be in Miller Hall. And there was a chapel on the second level. Does anybody remember back that far? Three of you. Excellent. We were having a small prayer group, and as we were gathered there about to form a circle of prayer, Janet walked in. You would have recognized her by the way she walked. She was holding herself together, head down. It was as if she was in terrible pain. She had been driving past the religion department to drop off some recycling goods. And on the way back, she came under the conviction, seeing the lights on in the Pearson Chapel, that she should stop and come upstairs. Now, I don't know if you've ever been under conviction to do something, and you ignore it, and you keep driving, and the more you drive, the stronger the conviction gets. Has that happened to anybody here? At that point, you've just got to just turn the radio on or, or turn around. Janet, blessed be the name of God, turned around and came in holding herself together and sat in the back of the chapel. I had prayed with Janet on many occasions. She had come into my office. In fact, I had known her for about five years she would come in and I would see bruise marks and burns and cuts on her body. She had even taken some time off to go into a treatment program for an eating disorder. But here she was again. Just a few weeks before, at an awards chapel, she was given the Outstanding Social Worker Award. And as she walked up, in my heart, I cried out to God, Oh God, what will it take for Janet to be healed? She'd gone to counselors, godly, godly counselors. But when they would get anywhere close to her pain, she would withdraw and now here she is graduating, and she comes to the prayer meeting at Pearson Chapel. When it was time for us to pray, I beckoned to Janet and I, to come to the front. We made a circle here in the front of the chapel. And while we were praying together, the Spirit of God impressed two young men in the circle to give a testimony of praise to God. They had been anointed some weeks before and had experienced the healing blessing of God. And they gave a testimony of praise. Now, my wife and I are going to be sharing 
in the afternoon session at 5. But any prayer ministry that does not include testimonies of praise will die. Testimonies of praise to God and testimonies of praise of what God has done in our lives. It will die. We just keep complaining to God about things that aren't fixed yet. But two young men in this circle of prayer gave a testimony of praise. And Janet told me later that as she heard those testimonies of praise, it was as if light was shining into the darkness. And she cried out, oh God, could you heal me? That was a silent cry. We didn't hear anything. The prayer service ended. People left. I was the last one there. You know how that goes, turning out the lights. And if any of you remember old Pearson Chapel, I walked down the stairs and turned right past the grade wall. We called it the Wailing Wall. I don't know why they called it that. And as I turned the corner, about to exit the lower level of Miller Hall, Janet was standing there, and she startled me because the lights were already out. She looked at me and said, I cannot live with this anger anymore. My first human thought was, well, why don't we schedule an anointing service? Uh, maybe next Wednesday, or that was my first thought. That was not an evil thought, but it was not God's thought. Because as I'm thinking in my mind, there in the darkness, Janet's standing there, the Spirit of God confronted me and said, I'm going to heal her tonight. Now, theoretically, I believe that God can do anything. Theoretically. But I have to tell you that that was like plugging in some electricity somewhere in my body. The shock. I'm going to heal her tonight. I fell to my knees. She knelt down as well. I think I was praying more for myself. And as I began to pray, a story from the scripture flashed into my mind. I'm so thankful for a, for a wonderful life companion who helps me memorize the Bible. Because I'm not that smart. <laughs> but the word of God is living and active. It is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And Jesus said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance the things I've said to you. Flashed into my mind the story of Jesus and the ruler of the Jews from Capernaum named Jairus. You may remember the story. When, after an interruption that actually was a great miracle, when they finally arrived at Jairus' house and the people, the paid mourners and maybe the relatives were wailing, Jesus said, the child is not dead but sleeping. And the Bible says they laughed him to scorn. I hope there's no one here that as we talk about Prayer for healing has kind of a <laughs> attitude. Our God is a healing God. And I'm praying this prayer on my knees. I'm so thankful that the Bible says when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will help us. And as I'm praying, when Jesus comes into the house and says, Talitha kum, little girl, 
I say to you, arise. Somewhere in those words, it suddenly dawned on me that Jesus was going to raise Janet from the dead. This little girl who had been brutally and systematically abused since she was about six years old, buried under a mountain of pain and darkness, Jesus was going to make her whole. Little girl, Janet, I say to you, arise. And when I said that, I did something I don't normally do when I'm praying. I peeked. I, I have to, I hope you understand that the Spirit helped me to pray. We need help. And as I peeked, she was reaching her hand up toward heaven. I say to you, by the way, I should have the words correct as I said them, little girl Janet, Jesus says to you, arise. Do you want to know the first thing that Janet said? I can breathe. <laughs> I can smile. I said, Janet, go back to your husband. She'd got married a year before. Her marriage was a disaster. It was literally imploding. Her husband could not understand all of the anger. Go back to your husband and tell him what the Lord has done for you. Janet went back to student housing. And as she opened the door, somewhat delayed from her trip to the recycling center, her husband saw her, and the first thing he said was, what has happened to you? And she said, Jesus has healed me. My faith is weak. I'm driving home in my little car going, Lord, help it to last. Help it to last. I only share that with you because I don't want you to think there's some kind of superheroes. Jesus can use every one of us if we stand under his authority, surrender to his will. And you know it was the will of God to heal that young lady. Don't tell me she has to struggle her whole life. That day of her healing, she had been walking around Village Market, ramming the shopping cart into her legs because of the pain on the inside. I called her the next morning. I was praying. <laughs> Janet, can you come over and give a testimony to my wife? She came over. I remember she walked up. We had a glass panel in the front door. My wife was standing with me in the hallway, and she looked through the glass and said, Praise God, she's been healed. <laughs> Janet told us that morning, it's Thursday morning, that she had been peeling a potato, and she paused and looked at the knife and thought how many times she'd cut herself and hurt herself. And she said, praise God, I'm free. She'd been believing for many years.
She was healed instantly that night. Her marriage, I told you, was a disaster. It was not healed instantly that night. It took a year of building doll houses. Anybody understand that? Think about it if you died when you were six. Building doll houses with a loving husband <laughs> who's funding the doll house construction business. Janet gave her testimony a year later at the Ultawa Church. Some of you are members of the Ultawa Church. There was, it was crowded, wasn't it, Bodil? The room was crowded. She, her husband was with her. In fact, he sat on a chair, and she stood behind him while she gave her testimony. And the whole time she gave her testimony, she was stroking his head. Do you understand what that means? She and her husband have five children today. The first one was named Amanda Grace. Said, should have been amazing, Grace. She said, I always thought I'd allow my little one. You understand, we've got lots of people here. But, but she said, I know that doesn't have to happen anymore. Jesus has made me whole. That experience, 26 miles from here, Caused me to go back to the scripture. Search the word. And I, I found texts like this one in Matthew 10 and verse 18. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received. Don't just sit around trying to stay out of trouble till Jesus comes. Freely you have received. I read verses like this one in Mark chapter 6 and verse 13. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Now I understand Mark's, he's not saying that they healed the people that Jesus healed them, but Jesus healed them because they were standing under the authority of Jesus, surrendered to his will, having the courage to say, even if my faith is weak, I serve an awesome Savior who has come to make people whole. The passage of Scripture that really amplifies that text in Mark 6 is found in James chapter 5. James, most believe that this James is the stepbrother of Jesus, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, who at one point scorned his younger stepbrother. But the Bible says in the book of Acts that he's there in the upper room. Hallelujah. And will become a leader in God's church. We are indebted by the Holy Spirit to this church leader who records for us the teaching of Jesus. You say, how do you know it's the teaching? Because he's not telling us what he thinks. They had been told to go out. And we read they anointed many with oil. James says, I, I want to just expand upon that brief historical reference. And for the next few minutes, I want to unpack James 5 with you. I don't want you to think what well, Derek thinks. I want you to hear the word of God because there are people here today who need to be made whole. There are people also that God wants to use you to bring a healing ministry to them. So let's unpack the text together. If you have your Bible, James chapter 5. I'll be putting text on the screen for those who would like to follow along. James chapter 5. And I'm beginning with verse 14. We're talking about prayer for healing. 
By the way, some of you are saying, Derek, uh, Janet was healed without any oil. I know. So was the man at the gate called Beautiful. But when Jesus told them to go out, he said, go out, they anointed many. That was the, the way he had taught them. If there's no oil, what do we do? Sorry, Jesus can't heal you today, no oil. He can heal with no oil. But the oil, as we'll discover, is a precious symbol. So look with me now, James chapter 5, beginning with verse 14. And it begins with a question. Please pay attention. This is really important. It begins with a question. Would you read it with me? It's on the screen here. Let's read it together. Is anyone among you sick? Before we rush on, pause with me. Is anyone among you? James is writing to believers scattered abroad. I want to ask an obvious question. Are there believers who need to be made whole? You say, Derek, we live on planet Earth. But, but that tells me that this precious gift is not for sale. Call the 900 number. Send your check to. This is not for sale. It is not for unbelievers. People will come and say, well, I don't believe in Jesus, but I need to be healed. Can you anoint me? The answer is no. If you're saying... Pastor Mark, will you teach me about Jesus? I hear he's an awesome savior and strong deliverer and, and, and great healer. Yes. But this gift is for anyone, what? Among you. Are you with me? Crucially important. Because this anointing will be in the name of Jesus. Secondly, this is really important, too. Is anyone among you? You say, Derek, why'd you underline that? Because I grew up thinking you had to be really old to ask to be anointed. Anybody feel that way when you were growing? Yep. In fact, some of us thought you had to be in intensive care. Maybe even, Brother Devin, your last breath. Almost like a last rites preparing you for death. That is not biblical. The text says what? Anyone. That means the little ones who came up to sing. It means older people. It means really, really old people. Anyone. That's really important. Thirdly, is anyone among you what? Now, I grew up in England where if I said I feel sick, that, that meant I feel like I'm going to vomit. Okay? But it could also mean I'm, I'm not feeling well. Is the anointing service for people who are not feeling well physically? The answer is yes. But not only that. The verb that's used, sick, translated, is the verb astheneo in the Greek. It means to be feeble or weak. Can you be feeble or weak physically? What about Janet? Can you be feeble or weak emotionally? Could you be feeble or weak spiritually? You say, I didn't know you could be anointed if you're struggling with faith in God. Why not? Why do we set all of these boundaries that are not biblical? Is anyone among you feeble or weak? The text goes on, James chapter 5. Let him, let her call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, her anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. Don't rush. Let him or her call the elders. Why is that important? What does it tell you? 
it tells you that we have a choice to make whether we will reach out or not. Is that right? Janet gave that silent cry when the light was shining and she said, Oh God, could you heal me? The silent cry was that when everybody else left, she was waiting in the downstairs hallway, right? We have a choice to make, to call. Now, I want to share something with you that, that sounds strange, but I have to say it. You can stay broken if you want to. You can stay damaged, whether it's an addiction to pornography or conflict in your relationships or some other unhealthy habit. You can stay like that your whole life. I do believe, please don't misquote me and tweet something, but I believe that Jesus saves broken people. But why should we stay broken if Jesus wants to make us whole? If you have a choice to make, let her call. Let him call. And notice the elders. Bill, where are you? I know you're here somewhere. Wave at me, Bill. Put your hand up and wave. My dear friend, Bill Beckworth, and I had the privilege of witnessing a great miracle of God in Cocoa Beach. I wish I had time to share the story. You can ask him about it. But I tell you, it would have been a foolish mistake for one person to think that God was calling him to do that alone. Call the elders. We don't want people saying, well, I think, the, I think was it who, maybe it was you, the healer. No, no. Jesus is the healer. We're just the elders. And by the way, I don't think that's saying, did you get elected as an elder? I think it's speaking about people of spiritual maturity, that you, you recognize that the hand of the Lord is upon them. And by the way, you have the privilege of calling the ones. Ellen White, when she was anointed, and she was anointed more than one time, she called J.N. Andrews. Do you know that J.N. Andrews memorized the entire New Testament in Greek? Saturated with the word of God. General Conference president sent him away as our first missionary to Europe. You remember? I'm not asking you to judge people. No, no. But people in whom you see the hand of the Lord, you call them. Are you with me? Do you understand? You have a choice to make. Call those elders. Let them pray over him or her in the name of the Lord. Now, we talked about that already this morning, right? We're not just saying a little prayer, oh, God, please. No, no, no. We are standing under the what? Authority of Jesus, surrendered to his will. So we're not, I've been in prayer meetings with someone with me, I rebuke this cancer in the name of Jesus, or even theatrical things that I have never been a part of, but seen where people say, and your doctor's name is Dr. Thompson. <gasps> this is not a religious show. We're standing under the authority of Jesus and saying, God, you know the healing blessing that this person needs. But we stand under your authority and surrender to your will. Father, if it's possible, but not, not my will, but your will be done. Are you with me? Anointing him or her with oil. I have a bottle of oil here that will be used tomorrow morning. It's just olive oil. But the oil is a symbol, isn't it? Just like water is a symbol in baptism and the washing away of sins. The oil is a symbol, just like the unleavened bread and the unfermented 
grape juice are symbols. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit of God. And it says when you pray in the name of Jesus for this person who is feeble or weak, anoint them with oil. I was anointed when I was 35 years old. I didn't know all of the healing I needed. But we were in a cabin in Idaho, and I requested anointing. Someone walked to the kitchen. There was a flask of olive oil sitting on the table. I have no idea where it came from. But this olive oil was brought in, and the person poured the flask of olive oil over my head. My first thought was, that's not what you're supposed to do. Well, at least I always thought you put a little oil and you put it on the head. That's a symbol of you making a choice to ask for the blessing. But as the person poured this flask of oil and it was running down my ears and chin, a happy thought came to me that God's blessings are always more abundant than we think. <laughs> Not long after that, I was set free from 30 years of anger that I didn't even know I had. Been carrying a backpack since I was a little boy. And Jesus made me whole. <laughs> I might even jump. That's hard for British people to do. <laughs> but we have a choice to make. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him, will raise her up. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. I want you to notice that the prayer of faith will do what? Now, now that word in the Greek, sozo, means to make whole. Janet was healed from years of bulimia. She was healed from cutting herself but she still had scars all over her, the outside of her body. She gave her testimony. She said, I have scars all over my body, but I have no scars on the inside anymore. <laughs> I've been healed. What is promised here is the wholeness that our loving Savior knows we need. Paul had to live with that thorn, didn't he? That thorn in his flesh. But God gave him the healing that he needed. So he could say, I've fought a good fight. Finished the race. Kept the faith. <laughs> Even with the thorn. God will give us the wholeness we need. The Lord will raise him or her up. Had the privilege of anointing a pastor with advanced prostate cancer. After his anointing, he just testified in the spirit and said, now I can face death unafraid. Is that a healing or did he miss out? Let's not tell God what to do. And if he or she has committed sins, he or she will be forgiven. You say, Derek, that's strange. How many of us have, forgiven, have committed sins? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> what does that mean? But have you ever, maybe in your own life, or known someone who keeps asking forgiveness over and over again for something they already asked for forgiveness for? You see, they've been forgiven, but they don't feel whole. They feel stained, soiled, damaged goods, as one person told me. You don't have to feel like that. Jesus can make you whole. If you've committed sins, you will experience the forgiveness, not just in your head, but in your life. I, I want you to just notice these three blessings when we're anointed in the name of Jesus. Made whole. Now, from what we've learned, made whole according to his... Are you with me? Made whole, how? Yes. Raised up. 
Yes, that's right, because he may raise us up right away, or over time, or in the resurrection. But I don't, it's okay, as long as I know he's going to raise us up. Amen? And sins forgiven, because we know it's his will. Three blessings are promised. Some of you might say, huh. Maybe we all need to be anointed. And to that I would say, is it true what I have on the screen? That we all have times when we are feeble or weak. Even pastors, church leaders, esteemed members of the community, we all have times when we are feeble and weak. And here's one sentence I want to remind you of today. Would you read it with me? Let your ears hear what you're saying, but, but change the you to me. Would you do that? The last word, change it to me. Let's read it together. The blessing of personal healing in the name of Jesus is also for somebody say hallelujah the blessing of personal healing in the name of Jesus is also for me it was some years ago that I was asked to have an anointing service in the gospel chapel which is uh, at College Hill Church my wife came with me she was going to go into the vespers at the church and I was going to go into the gospel chapel for the anointing service. A young lady in her late teens asked if she could be anointed because she had given her heart to Jesus. She was recently married to a Christian man, but she was being troubled by dreams about foolish things she had done in her teenage years. Shall we tell her to just live with that for the rest of her life? <laughs> Or could we have courage to believe that Jesus could make her whole? Well, I'm walking and I'm turning into the gospel chapel. My wife is about to turn into the balcony of the church for Vespers. And the young lady sees us and beckons to my wife. Honey, I want you to come up. Can you come up this way? What I did not know, I was oblivious as my wife will say, happens on occasion, <laughs> is it was a direct answer to her prayer. We have the anointing service, and at the end of the service, after this young lady has been anointed, her husband is there, some other relatives, the Spirit of God impressed me that there was someone else in the room who needed healing. So what do we do? Well, we can't just anoint them because it says, let her call, right? Let him call. We can't say, you really need to be anointed. Sit still. I'm coming over. <laughs> so how could we give that person an opportunity to call the elders? Any ideas? Well, here's what I did. Tell me if it was I guess there's no right or I just said I'm impressed by the spirit that there's someone else here who needs a healing blessing from God. If that's you, raise your hand. Our eyes are closed. No, don't raise it now. We have an anointing service tomorrow. Raise your hand. And my wife is here. And I opened, I peeked again. And every hand in the circle, except the other pastor who was with me, LeClaire Litchfield, some of you know Litch, every other hand was raised, including the hand of the person by my side. <laughs> there may be someone closer than you think who needs a healing blessing. What had happened that morning? Well, I really didn't know a lot about anointing, really. 
that's something that the ministers do, the pastors do, right? And um, so I wasn't even thinking about that, but I'd been struggling for a long time with a certain issue. It was a relationship issue. It wasn't with me. <laughs> Um, I thought I'd better give that disclaimer. <laughs> so I had come to the point where I actually, that Friday morning, getting ready to go to work, I had cried out to God. I'm God, God, I need healing for this. Whatever you have to do. And I, I remember just standing in the bathroom just praying because it had just come to that point. And so then I just went off to work and didn't think about it anymore, except that I wonder how God's going to do this. Maybe he'll lead me to a counselor or something. And by the way, Christian life. counselors are a wonderful gift. Oh, yes, definitely. And that, that's kind of what I had in mind, but I'll be open to the counselor you lead me to or whatever you have. And so when I came home from work that day, Derek was just getting ready to um, leave. And so I was a little bit disappointed because I was like, oh, my, you know, he's going off now. We haven't seen each other all week. And at least if I get in the car and go with him and go to the Vespers, we can at least visit for eight minutes in the car. So that's how I got over there. And as Derek explained, they invited me to join. And as I said, I didn't really know a lot about the anointing service. And um, when he asked if there was anyone else in the group, I just raised my hand. I go, God, is this the answer? And so I was anointed that night. And I praise God for his word and the truth of his word. And since that time, I've been to many anointing services for people who have invited me to join in a small setting or in other cases like this where the anointing service is offered for people. And I have not been anointed since then, but every anointing service I've attended, I have been blessed. The Holy Spirit is there in tremendous power and if you're not sensing a need for healing, come and support through your presence and prayer. And then we came to Kahata this week, and God has put something on my heart this week that it's another issue that I've been struggling with for years. And so many times we go on and on and on in our lives trying to figure out how to deal with things. And I finally... This opportunity is here tomorrow for me to take it to the Lord um, to be anointed. So I thank God for that opportunity. And I thank you for your presence here and your prayers. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we want to teach you a song. <laughs> But before we do, I'm going to read a quotation. But Ashley and Emily, if you want to get some microphones. Uh, some of you might be thinking, Derek, this sounds a little extreme. This isn't what we're used to. Others are saying, finally. Finally. But may I share with you, I, I know that we're not all Seventh-day Adventist Christians here. We're all seeking the Lord different places on our journey. But for those of you that have been blessed by the ministry of Ellen White, I believe she was a prophetess of God. And I just want you to hear what she says. When, when, <laughs> when I read it, I was like, yes. <laughs> our Lord has given us definite instructions through the Apostle James. What's she talking about? She's talking about James 5, 14 through 16, prayer for healing. The Lord has given us definite instruction. By the way, the whole context you can read. It's talking about prayer for the sick. 
through the Apostle James as to our duty in case of sickness. Get ready for this next sentence. It's startling. Oh, will you read it with me? When human help fails, God will be the helper of his people. <laughs> Why, even a conservative person might say hallelujah. When human help fails. I've tried everything. You say, I don't know. I, just, I guess I'm going to have to just live with it. Now, I'm not saying all your sickness will go away. I, I have an, a physical ailment which was discovered about the same time that I was anointed. From what I can tell, I will live with that until Jesus makes all things new. But he took away a backpack of anger that I'd been carrying for 30 years. So let's not tell him what to do. Let's say, Father, not my will. When human help fails, God will be the helper of his pe people. The blessing of personal healing in the name of Jesus is also for you. So here's a song. It was, um, the words were written uh, 2,500 years ago by the prophet Jeremiah, who'd been through trauma. I think it would be fair to say, Bodil, that Jeremiah had PTSD. His country had been ravaged by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. Many of his dear friends, like Daniel and Ezekiel, had been taken as prisoners of war. And you know some of the things that happened to them there. He was, he was, he was wounded. And he writes this prayer in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 14. This is word for word with some repetition of phrases. From Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. And uh, Bodil and Ashley and Emily are going to teach it to us. We're going to sing it through two times. And uh, I pray that you'd hide this in your heart. What do you think? Isn't that a beautiful song? Stay right there. 
What do we need to remember? I, you, can, you can take the you and put me if you feel that's appropriate. But do we not all have people we love and pray for who need to be made whole? Hmm? Let's read it together. What does it say? The blessing of personal healing in the name of Jesus is also for... <laughs> so I'm going to make a simple appeal today. Helen White gives clear counsel that we should never speak about this topic and just anoint people. That there should be time to reflect, to prepare the heart. Yes. I'm thankful for spirit-led leaders for this prayer conference that they have allocated time tomorrow morning. It's early. It's not, it's not uh, just automatic. You have to get up early. It's at 7 a.m. We're going to have multiple teams of elders here because I don't think it should be one person or even two elders. And I, I really appreciate the, the idea of coming to pray. Saw a miracle at SoCal camp meeting. Three hours, teams prayed. A young dentist and his wife and her sister waited all those hours. I came, I said, thank you for being so patient. Would you like to be anointed? They said, no, we just stayed to pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you may come to pray, but some of you may come to pray and the Spirit of God may say, the blessing is also for you. So we're going to sing the song again. And I just uh, want to make an appeal. You're not coming forward, which is what I'm going to invite you to do. You're not coming forward to be anointed. You're coming forward saying, God, I want to be open. Your spirit is present to bless and to heal. I want to be open to what you want to do for me. Does that make sense to you? And then you'll be praying through these hours. This is a blessed place. You'll be praying through these hours and through the night. You may wake in the night. Maybe you'll say, heal me, O oh Lord, <laughs> and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved for you on my praise. And then 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. I was in Poland two summers ago. I asked the conference president, could we have an anointing service during this evangelistic week? At an, uh, it's an evangelistic camp, Camp Zetonia. And uh, he said, that's wonderful. They've been through a lot of PTSD there. We had no idea whether five people would come or ten. First time ever at the camp. We met at 6.30 ahead of the 7 o'clock prayer time. The president said, Let, let's have all of the pastors, the elders who are going to participate, go into the tent. Let's pray before we go to the beach where the anointing service was to be held. The Spirit of God impressed that there were people in that circle. And when I opened my eyes, every pastor had his hand raised. <laughs> The blessing is also for you. When we made our way down to the beach, more than 200 people had gathered from the camp. And the power of Jesus was present to heal them. So as we sing this song again, if the Spirit of God has touched your heart and you say, God, I want to be open to what you want to do in my life. You come. You come forward. You press forward. Don't, don't block up right there. Press forward. Let's sing together. We sing. Hear me, O Lord, and I shall be Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. You
be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are under his authority and surrendered to his will. Thank you for the revelation, for the reminder that Jesus wants to make us whole. And God, there may be something will bear with us until the day you make all things new. But we do not want to carry anything that you don't want us to carry. We don't want to carry backpacks and chains that you want taken away. And so here we are. We're aware of the fact that this is holy ground. Because you are here. For some who pray and reflect, prepare their hearts tomorrow morning in this place may be a place of healing blessing. For others, the Spirit may impress to go back to your local church. Call your elders. God, you know all that. We do not seek to direct your plan. But we do want to be attentive to your will. And so as the healing river of blessings flows, we open our hearts and say, may your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.